part of what drew you to this script and to Spoon? Or? It, yeah, well, in a way, because I felt like, well, upon my release, I felt like I wanted to be seen as a complete human being. I'm through, um, like, mimicking characters for people so that they can get a better understanding on what young black males are about. I want to mimic whole characters so that I can get a better understanding on what men and human beings are about. So now it's like I don't care about making people understand how we are. That's what I used to do. Every part was just about digging deeper into who young black males are, and I felt like I was an actor that could do that. I'm not interested in that. And Spoon is my first venture into breaking off into that new philosophy as far as it being um, not all sad, not violent, um, not all serious, you know, and it's funny. To somebody who just hears what, that I'm a heroin junkie, they'll think, oh, it's just the same thing. But that's part of the love that I, that I get when I see them see the movie and they go, oh. you know, and then it's a heroin addict like you've never seen. It has so much... Well, it's really got a lot of realism in it because, I mean, in real life, you're in a horrible situation and something funny happens. Yeah. And it's so funny. Yes. And that's what I like. And we're like, um, it's like we always joke, me and Tim, that it's an action movie. We're action stars now. We're running and stuff. And if you look at us, we look like the two most unlikely action stars in the world. So it's like we're the new, we always joke like we're the new um, Danny Glover and Mel Gibson. I'm the Mel Gibson. He's the Danny Glover. And... That's part of the whole thing now. We just, it's fun for us to do this because he's not used to, the, to this and I'm not used to this. Well, he's, an, he's like an actor's actor, so he's done every part. You know, Tim has played an ice cream cone, you know what I mean? But I haven't played a lot of different parts, so it's fun to, when I do do this, to do it with him. You know what I mean? It makes me feel comfortable and I can take his criticisms and his praises more seriously knowing that he knows what he's talking about. Because usually I wouldn't give credit to another actor like, what does he know? but him I can respect. Let's just talk about Spoon for a minute because he's such a, an interesting character. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess, you know, tell us like a little bit of his adventure that he goes on. Spoon. He is a man who's found, who hasn't found that peace yet. You know how they say you, you're born and you go through things and then you go through this big catharsis and you change. Well, he's going through things. He hasn't yet found a door to change. So he's like in his mid-20s, going to his late 20s, and still hasn't done anything with his life except get high and, you know, be into this music thing. So, and and he's always been like a take. I took, I got take things from this person, take things from that person. But with Stretch, he's given. It's like I'm his guardian. And... I think that Spoon is scared to move away or walk away from Stretch because then he'll know how empty his life truly is and how he's really nowhere. So to me, it's, that's good because it talks about a need for friendship and it talks about the bond that our friendship is about. Not only me and Stretch, but Sh Stretch and I and Cookie, you know what I mean? The bond that we all share. So that's what I think is deep about that. Because you start, the Spoon is the one that, that decides that you guys should quit. You know, no. And you keep like pulling and stretches like, going back to mud and getting into trouble. And he represents euthanasia, you know, to die slowly, to die um, painlessly. You know what I mean? That's his character is euthanasia. And my character is reality because I don't want to die. So when it comes to that point where we get to the door, we either die, you know, we got to take that big chance. Stretch has no problem taking that chance because he feels as though he's already dying. So it's to die slow, you know what I mean? It's to die painlessly. Whatever fun we can have on the way is what he wants to do. Whereas with me, it's like I don't want to die. And so I'm constantly getting us out of this drama that he puts us in. That's a law. Yeah, it's, that's a law. You learn that in acting class. They pass out cigarettes. I know you've done some acting before, you know, like three or four movies. Was it something that always interested you? Was it like a natural outgrowth of performing? I believe. Rap is like more, like it's like performance music. But what it truly is, is I've always been an actor. 
and rap music, the reason I've been successful in the rap game, I think, is that I treat my albums like movies and I treat writing it like I'm a character writing a story, you know, for each album, whatever I'm going through, whatever stages I'm going through. And I do it vividly with vivid pictures, with action and description and the beginning, middle and an end and conflict and, you know, redemption and things like that. So I feel like I've always been an actor and acting is my first love. I went to school to perform in arts. I studied. I wanted to be an actor. But due to the poverty and the natural circumstances that stopped me, like being poor and homeless and all of that, I never got a chance to leisurely study acting with great teachers and, you know, fine tune my craft. What I did do, though, was throw myself into the streets and learn as many experiences as I could. So now that I have the opportunity now to relax, exhale, and actually um, work on the craft, I have so many things to draw from. And it makes it where I'm comfortable now with this, where I wasn't doing those other movies. It was just like a hobby. Now I'm an actor, and I, want, I don't want anybody to take that from me and say, you're a rapper who's acting because you would hardly pay me this, and you would hardly get these scenes that you're getting if I was a rapper just acting. You know what I mean? For the check. So I'm an actor. I just happen to rap on my spare time instead of being a waiter. Do you think part of the reason you've been so incredibly successful as, as a rap artist also is that you create, like your songs create a complete character that you kind of put out there? Yeah, I think that um, with my music, it's like watching somebody go through things my whole career. And I feel like it's like if James Dean was a rapper, it would be me. You know what I mean? Or if Marilyn Monroe was a rapper, it'd be me. If the person who you who you can um, just watch go through crazy drama and just, you know, you could either cry, laugh, cheer, or whatever, but it's not happening to you, it's happening to them. And I'll tell you vividly, because I don't know that you're not supposed to tell people everything that happens in your life, so I just tell them. And that's what I think has made me successful, if, if anything. And now has it become kind of, like, larger, you know, Bondi was talking about, like, being with you on the set and reading the papers that you're out, like, doing something. Yeah, and I'll be right there. That Yeah, it is that. And that's what's... Um, I guess that's what's uh, frustrating and aggravating that I can't live down this big shadow that I made to protect myself. Because it started out as just being, I need to get an alter ego to keep people away from me and to protect myself, which everybody does. You know, like when somebody breaks into your house and you know he's in the house, you wouldn't go in your real voice, excuse me, are you breaking the miles? You would go, hey, what you doing, miles? It's the same thing that I do. You know what I mean? If you're out in the wilderness and I'm just one sheep by myself, I wouldn't go. Um, I want to say my next song, um, it's called, uh, I would go, you know, ooh, fuck the world. You know what I mean? And that's, that's, that's worked. You know what I mean? And not that it's like a total facade. Of, it's, it's, it's me, but it's just blown up. And what the media does is, if you ever want to see anger, just he's the best actor in the world, and he'll show it to you. So, so that's what they do, and make it look like I'm just any guy in America when I'm an actor who's just playing this part so well that I look very angry. You know, not that I'm such a great actor, but anger is easy. Everybody gets mad. Everybody's frustrated, and everybody is fed up, so it's not, very, it's not a very hard part to play, you know. No, you created, like, something that was, like, yeah, too good, because now they're... <laughs> now they're using it. I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I've made Bob Dole and Dolores Tucker into household names, you know, along with some of the other rappers. And I've made a lot of people, I made politicians, you know, figure out what it is they do for a living, you know what I mean? And that's good in a way, but it's bad in a lot of ways. I, I, we always wanted to spark debate. We always wanted to be noticed, but never wanted it to be this way. Where now, all we've been shouting about all this time is better laws and more respect. And all the shouting, all this is doing now is getting laws changed so that we can't shout about it no more. And we get less respect anyway. So it's frustrating to see this demon that not only the media has created, but I've taken responsibility for helping to create that. But um, it's just like any full-blooded all-American guy, when you're in high school, you're the party animal, then you want to grow up. But... What if you was in high school all your life and nobody wanted to see you go from the party animal to the student or the scholar? You know, it's just too much fun because what it is is that they don't have a party animal who's as good as I am, who's as articulate and fun to watch and charismatic. You know what I mean? That's what they actually say and that's how they actually feel. It's not me jocking myself, but that's how they feel. It's like, oh, he's the best villain because at least we can hear what it is we don't like. He's saying it clear, but if you thought about it, I'm hardly the villain. I'm hardly the one you should be scared of. It's the guy that can't talk. It's the guy without a job. It's the one with scars on his face, not the one clean cut. 
You know what I mean? You should be worried about a lot of other things, but not me. It's interesting because you kind of have, Spoon is kind of uh, artistically a way out for you, and Spoon is looking for... No doubt. He is a way to help my image, and I am a way for him to... Um, my life has been has made it easy for me to jump into Spoon because all I had to do is think where would I be if I stayed on those paths and I would be Spoon because he's articulate, talented, he's just a junkie, you know what I mean? So where would I be at passion, you know what I mean? And I feel like if you walk by a street and you was walking on concrete and you saw a rose growing out of concrete, even if it had messed up petals and it was a little, you know, to the side, you would marvel at just seeing a rose.